This is a lecture for Module 9 in the Apologia General Science book for Mrs. Ross' class at the Lancaster Learning Link. Module 9 is entitled, What is Life? In this module, we'll look at four criteria that define life. All life forms have to have each and every one of these in order to be considered a living organism. The first of these four criterion states that all life forms contain deoxyribonucleic acid, which is called DNA. Now I want you to say this word with me. Let me say it again one more time. Deoxyribonucleic acid. Now say it with me. Deoxyribonucleic acid. That is why we use an abbreviation, DNA, so that we don't have to say that big long word. What exactly is DNA? Well, DNA, or deoxyribonucleic acid, is a set of instructions that takes the chemicals which make up life, like the chemicals like proteins and carbs and fats, and it arranges those chemicals in just the right order so as to produce a living system. This model airplane kit is a good example of what DNA is like. The pieces that make up this kit do not make a model airplane. In order for the model airplane to be made, the pieces must be assembled according to the instructions. In the same way, the chemicals that make up a living organism require the instructions in DNA in order to form the living organism. So the next question is, what does DNA look like? Well, DNA is a molecule and it is made up of atoms. Atoms are the smallest chemical unit of matter. What is matter? Well, matter is something that occupies space. Examples of atoms are things like oxygen, hydrogen, chlorine. There are about 116 different kinds of atoms. This slide shows you what's called the periodic table of elements. You may have seen this before. This is used a lot in chemistry, and we'll learn more about it next year in physical science. I just wanted to show this to you so that you can see all the different atoms that there are. In the upper left-hand corner, you'll see the square marked H. That is the chemical symbol for the atom hydrogen. If you look over to the square numbered number 8, that has an O. That's the chemical symbol for the, for the atom called oxygen. So this periodic table of elements shows us all the different atoms that are out there. Well, these atoms link together to form larger building blocks, and those building blocks are called molecules. The definition of a molecule is two or more atoms linked together to make a substance with unique properties. You're probably familiar with a couple different kinds of molecules. For example, water is a molecule. It's made up of two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom, and that's why we call it H2O. Another molecule you might be familiar with is carbon dioxide. That's made up of one carbon atom and two oxygen atoms, and that's why we call it CO2. Now, just like water and carbon dioxide are made up of molecules, so is DNA. DNA is a molecule, but it is a really, really big molecule. You see, most molecules are made up of somewhere between two and a hundred atoms that are linked together. For example, water and carbon dioxide each have three atoms linked to make one molecule. But DNA it isn't made up of a few atoms, it is made up of millions of atoms. In fact, a single human DNA molecule has so much information in it with all these atoms that it contains the equivalent of 500,000 pages of information. That's an amazing molecule. That leads us to the question, could DNA have just happened by accident? That would pretty much be what the explanation would be if we would 
uh, agree with the theory of evolution. Well, the, f the idea that DNA would happen just by accident is sort of similar to the uh, illustration where you would just throw together some plastic and some wire and some metal and you'd leave it there on the ground and you would wait around for it to be struck by lightning. Now if by chance it did get struck by lightning, then what would need to happen in this illustration is for that plastic and wire and metal to just turn into a computer. Now I know you're saying that is highly unlikely, but in the same way DNA happening by accident is highly unlikely. But that's not even the whole story. In order for this, for this probability to work that DNA would happen by accident, it's not enough that this stuff would get struck by lightning and result in a computer. But inside the computer there would be a CD. And on that CD would be detailed instructions for how to assemble a bicycle. Now that is when we get to the point of being equivalent to the probability that DNA would occur by accident. So DNA occurring by accident is about the same probability as this illustration that I just showed to you or explained to you where plastic wire and metal get struck by lightning, turn into a computer that has a CD and on that CD are detailed instructions for assembling a bicycle. Pretty unlikely, isn't it? And that makes me think that DNA was not created by accident, but created by a God in heaven. Now in your book you had on your own 9.2 and it asked the question, how is a cookbook like DNA? Well I wanted to talk about that a little bit to make sure that you understand it because it really is kind of a good, inf a good illustration. You see a cookbook has recipes that tells you how to take many individual things and put them together in such a way as to make something tasty. Just like that, DNA is like that cookbook because DNA has the information that takes those many individual chemicals that aren't alive and then it puts them together in such a way to make life. Now remember those chemicals are things like proteins and carbs. Those things aren't alive, but DNA can take those things. It has the information to put those things together in such a way to make life. Now how does it have all of that information to make life? Well, the way that it is put together, which is its structure, that is how it stores the information that tells how to, that tells how to put those chemicals together to make, to make life. So that structure of the DNA is something that we need to understand. Remember DNA is a molecule and the shape of that molecule is called a double helix. It's kind of famous. The double helix is sort of the famous shape of DNA. Now other things can have the shape as well, but if you look at the bottom of this slide you see that that spiraling thing with um, with the two pieces that are spiral spiraling around each other and that's called the double helix. Now there's a couple parts of the DNA molecule structure that we need to learn about. First is the backbone. Those are the long strands that are shown here in sort of the silvery white. They are long strands of atoms that are linked together in just the right way. The other part of the DNA structure that carries the information are these units called nucleotide bases. Nucleotide bases. There are four different nucleotide bases. There's cytosine, guanine, thymine, and adenine. Those four in all their various combinations give us all the information that DNA holds. But there are only certain ways that these different nucleotide bases can be combined together. Now here's one of my helpful little hints to 
help you remember how these can be put together. If you take these four nucleotide bases, the adenine, cytosine, guanine, and thymine, and put them in alphabetical order, then the middle two can be linked together, and the outside two can be linked together. So adenine always will be linked with thymine. It will, adenine and cytosine never can go together, and adenine and guanine can never go together. Adenine and thymine are the only combination. Likewise, only cytosine and guanine can be linked together. So if, for example, we have half of a DNA molecule, and on one half of that we have the nucleotide base thymine, well, we know right away what's got to be on the other half because thymine can only link with adenine. So that's what we see, that thymine and adenine are linked together. Okay, now I want you to think about this one. What if the next nucleotide base was cytosine? What's going to have to be on the other half of the DNA molecule that will link up with cytosine? Hopefully you've figured this out and you know that it has to be guanine because only cytosine and guanine can link together. Okay, let's try one more. This time on half of our molecule of DNA we have adenine. So what needs to be on the other side that can link to adenine? Okay, the answer to that one would be thymine because adenine can only connect with thymine. So we see that these four nucleotide bases, which make up the structure of DNA, they are arranged kind of like Morse code, and they contain all the information that's necessary for life. Now you did experiment 9.1 at home where you built a DNA module using the pipe cleaners and the beads. What I want you to know from that is that each side of the ladder that you made is really its own molecule. The place where the beads touch each other is really a link that holds one side of the ladder to the other side. And as you've seen, if you know the sequence of nucleotide bases on one half of a portion of DNA, you can determine what the sequence of nucleotide bases will be on the other half of the DNA because they only can link up with certain nucleotide bases. I thought it would be kind of fun to go out on internet and see what other sort of models of DNA were out there. And I found this one built out of, I think it's Legos, but notice how they made it right that there's always grays hooked up with yellows and blues hooked up with whites. There's never a gray with a white or a yellow with a blue, and they're just keeping things correct as far as the nucleotide bases. Now this next one is something I probably should have purchased for my children. It's the baby's first DNA model. You see, DNA is what makes up our genes, and my husband has his PhD in genetics, so he kind of likes all this stuff about DNA, and maybe he would have liked it if our kids had had a toy like this, but I didn't know it was available. I just think it's kind of funny that you could buy something like this for your baby. So that finishes up this first part of our lecture, which covered the criterion number one, that all life forms contain deoxyribonucleic acid, which is called DNA.